Welcome everyone to the fifth developer of the year Michael Wormit Award. About five years ago, on March 14 of 2015, the life of Michael Wormit was cut short. It was and still is a tragic loss for all of us. Michael was a husband, a son, a friend, a great colleague, and a great mentor. He was also a part of QCAM developers community. We gather here today to remember Michael and to celebrate his accomplishment and his contributions to our community. His life was short, but he left a mark and his work will continue to make an impact. And this is something which we should cherish and remember. To commemorate Michael's contribution to QCAM community, QCAM Board of Directors established an award in his name. On behalf of the Board of Directors, let me introduce Michael Wormitz's award. The award has been established in August 2015 to recognize excellence in developing new methods and algorithms in the area of electronic structure and implementing these methods in state-of-the-art computer codes within QCAM Open Teamware Community Project. The award is given annually and it includes a certificate, which I will show you soon, and $500 prize. By this award, Michael is remembered for developing state-of-the-art algorithms and computer codes for many body methods and for his leadership in community building, education, and mentoring of junior team members and infrastructure development. Any member of the QCAM developers community is eligible for this award. And the selection criteria are scientific innovation, excellence in code development, contributions to infrastructure and developers community. The first award was given in San Diego in 2016 to Evgeny Epifanovsky and in 2017 to Andrew Gilbert, 2018 Alec White and to Yonho Lee in 2019. Today, the fifth Michael Wormit Developer of the Year Award will be presented. We have received several outstanding nominations the board appointed an international selection committee. The committee has chosen two winners as this year is an exceptional year. And the winner of the 2020 Developer of the Year Warmit Awards are Dr. Yuji Mao and Dr. Pavel Pohilo. I will introduce them separately, but please join me virtually in thanking Yuji and Pavel for their contribution to the company and to the community and congratulate them on being selected as the recipient of the 2020 Developers of the Year Michael Warmit Award. The first speaker today is Pavel and this is a certificate Pavel you will receive signed by Anna Kirillo, the president of the QCAM. And let me briefly introduce Pavel. Pavel graduated uh, from Moscow State University with honors. After that, he moved to University of Southern California for his PhD under supervision of the Anna Krilo. The nomination of Pavel was mainly based on his work at USC that includes implementation of multiple features in QCAM. The selection committee especially cites the development of single and mixed precision coupled cluster codes. Spin orbit couplings EOM CC, frozen natural orbital approximation for open shell systems, new localization library, and effective Hamiltonian for magnetic property. Powell not only develops QCAM for his project, but also helps other research groups to interface with QCAM and integrate their codes into QCAM. A short code from the nomination letter by Anna Krillo. I rarely have a chance to enjoy such a stimulating discussion about science, even with postdocs. So I hope postdocs are not offended. Pavel is now a postdoctoral fellow at Professor 
this group at the University of Michigan working on the application of Green's function method to a strongly correlated system. And today, Powell will talk uh, about from single nuclear magnets to infinite spin chains, a many body adventure. Powell, the floor is yours. All right, excellent. Uh, today, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, molecular magnets. Uh, about molecular systems, I will start from single molecule magnets, and then uh, I will uh, talk about uh, bulk magnetism. And I will talk about uh, infinite systems. Uh, why uh, why I will in interested in a single molecule magnets or in magnetism in general? Uh, it is um, uh, uh, these uh, materials. Uh, can be used uh, in electronics uh, and uh, uh, they can be employed in uh, many uh, devices. So single molecule magnets specifically are very lightweight uh, and uh, th therefore they can be used for novel uh, memory types and over uh, several recent years uh, they received a lot of attention because they can be uh, used as uh, uh, building blocks for qubits. Uh, single molecule magnets are tunable uh, because we can replace uh, metal centers uh, that exhibit uh, mag magnetic properties and ligands uh, and uh, and change uh, the way how these molecules respond to the magnetic field. And theory can guide uh, experimental studies in the designing of these systems. Um, so uh, experimentally, uh, the systems are usually described through some model Hamiltonians, uh, such as uh, the one shown here, uh, Heisenberg Hamiltonian. Here, J denotes uh, an effective exchange constant uh, and uh, uh, local spins as A and as B uh, describe uh, the open shell electrons on uh, radical centers. But from a theoretician's point of view, uh, this Hamiltonians looks a little bit like this. There is some uh, effective quantity, uh, effective local quantity on one center interacting with another effective operator uh, on another center through some effective interaction. Uh, in uh, rigorous ab initio uh, description, uh, all the wave functions are very multi-configurational. Uh, they have a lot of contributions. And we have to work very hard uh, to uh, wrap them into this uh, uh, effective form. Uh, uh, I will talk a little bit how we do that. Uh, we have to face challenges uh, describing both strong and weak correlation. And uh, we do that through uh, equation of motion coupled cluster ansatz. First, uh, we pick a determinant. Uh, that uh, we pick a reference determinant that uh, describes uh, a, a reference state well. We can pick uh, either a closed shell determinant or an open shell determinant. Then we solve a, a weakly correlated problem for it and we find uh, a coupled cluster amplitudes describing the uh, reference state. Then we solve an uh, eigenvalue type of uh, equation and uh, uh, find uh, linearly parameterized operators that act on this reference state and generate um, uh, all other states. Uh, in uh, UMCC ANSAS, we have a lot of freedom of uh, how to choose this operator and uh, different flavors of it uh, will give uh, different variants of the methods. For example, uh, we can uh, pick uh, electronic excitations, and uh, in this case, we will obtain descriptions of the electronically excited states, and uh, this uh, variant of the methods is called uh, EE, or methods for electronic, uh, electronically excited states. We can pick uh, spin flipping operators, and uh, in this case, we will uh, obtain uh, the electronic states that differ from the reference state by the spin projection. And this variant of the method is especially useful for single molecule magnets because it allows to access 
different spin manifolds uh, and it allows to access uh, uh, multiple open shell states. Uh, we can also change the number of electrons. Uh, if we remove one or two electrons, we get uh, a method for ionization potential or uh, double ionization potential if we remove two electrons. Or we can attach electrons. Uh, and this leads to electron attachment variant of the methods or double electron attachment variant of the methods. These methods are also useful for strongly correlated systems because they can access uh, electronic states with uh, different orbital occupations. Now, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, magnet, uh, magnetism phenomena is uh, uh, much more complicated because uh, we, we often have to deal uh, not only uh, with uh, uh, non-relativistic uh, Schrodinger equation that leads to isotropic magnetic Hamiltonians, but we often have to deal with relativistic effects uh, that uh, can uh, lead to magnetic uh, anisotropy and uh, anisotropic Hamiltonians. So one of the most important uh, relativistic effects is uh, uh, spin-orbit interaction. It has one and two electron terms. Uh, and uh, this Hamiltonian is spin dependent. So we have to think how we uh, deal with the states of uh, different spin projection. Um, so two uh, electron part of the spin orbit operator uh, is very bulky. So it's common to introduce some uh, approximation. We use uh, a spin orbit uh, mean field, which is very accurate, and we don't uh, impose any additional approximation. Uh, effectively, uh, it looks exactly like uh, the uh, one electron part, so we can uh, apply the uh, algebra that we use for one electron part. But effectively, we will treat uh, two electron part uh, well. Uh, and uh, we have to deal with a different spin projection. So how, how do we do that? Um, uh, we, if we want to compute uh, spin orbit couplings as uh, a transition property, we start uh, from uh, computing uh, transition density matrices as we usually do in calculations of uh, uh, transition properties. Uh, then uh, we uh, use wigner eckert theorem to uh, extract uh, the uh, reduced uh, matrix elements out of the uh, transition density matrix. Uh, and this matrix element does not depend on, uh, on any uh, spin projections. Then we contract it with integrals uh, and uh, uh, thus we obtain the reduced matrix elements that uh, do not depend on uh, spin projections. And we use wigner eckert theorem again uh, to uh, compute uh, all possible uh, matrix element uh, to compute matrix elements uh, uh, between the multiplets with uh, uh, any uh, spin projections. Uh, this uh, algorithm is uh, uh, ansatz agnostic, so it can be used for different methods. And currently, we interfaced it uh, with uh, EMCC, EMMP2. Uh, core valence uh, separated uh, EMCC and uh, RAS CI. Mm, so, how can we use it uh, in uh, molecular systems? So, here I would like to share with you one of the examples. Uh, this is uh, a, a single molecule magnet. Uh, it is an iron complex. So, this is iron and it is surrounded by bulky ligands. Uh, and uh, we can start from the Hexted reference state. Uh, it has an alpha electron on each of the d orbitals. Uh, this uh, uh, electronic state uh, is uh, weakly correlated and uh, it is well described by only one uh, reference determinant. So it is convenient to pick it as a reference state. And uh, we 
uh, add just one electron through EMCC ansatz, and we can add it uh, to different d orbitals. So we can add it either to the lowest orbitals or further, and we can obtain a balanced description of uh, multiple quintets. Uh, these quintets uh, can interact through spin-orbit interaction uh, that uh, uh, splits uh, the ground state. So here I show how the ground state splits uh, because of the symmetry of the system, uh, spin projection as Z is preserved. And you can see that it, it forms some sort of a barrier that in order to go from uh, the lower state uh, on the right to the state on the left, the system has to go through some barrier. So uh, this situation can be described by an effective Hamiltonian uh, of, of this type as ds, where d is a tensor. It's called um, uh, single ion anisotropy, uh, and its name perfectly fits the situation that we have here. We have only one uh, transition atom. Uh, and if we compare our calculations uh, with the experimental results, we see a very good agreement. So uh, from that, we can think that uh, we indeed are on a good track in computing of these properties. But sometimes the life is not easy and for both theoreticians and experimentalists. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the very challenging systems is uh, copper oxalate. Uh, it is an infinite system, so it is a bulk uh, antiferromagnet, uh, and uh, uh, its uh, crystal structure is uh, its crystal structure consists of chains that are assembled together. So, uh, so you can see the fragments of these chains uh, uh, on the right. On the right. Um, if experimentally, it is a challenge because it's not very clear how to interpret uh, the experimental measurements. There are uh, groups that uh, interpret uh, the magnetic measurements in terms of dimeric models, and uh, there are other groups who interpret the, me the measurements in terms of uh, uh, infinite spin chain models. And uh, uh, it's not very clear which uh, magnetic uh, structure uh, this compound has. But here theory can resolve this puzzle and resolve the battle. So, but how can we treat the infinite number of, uh, um, of spins? Uh, the system seems to be uh, way too large and way too strongly correlated. Uh, we can build an effective model for that. So, uh, first we start from the very detailed description of the system that we can obtain through EMCC. We can uh, obtain the description of strong correlation and weak correlation. We see uh, all the determinants that contribute to the wave function. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a good description of the uh, energies and properties. Um, uh, and then we can map it into model wave functions and model Hamiltonians. Mathematically, such transformation is described by a Bloch formalism, where omega is a mapping operator. So it allows us uh, to uh, it allows us to formulate an effective theory in the model uh, subspace uh, without uh, any loss of quality, without losing any any quality of energies or uh, physical observables, uh, and then. Uh, we can work with this model Hamiltonians uh, as suggested by uh, Nick Mayhel and Martin Hat Gordon a few years ago. Uh, we can uh, expand it uh, to the states uh, that uh, we cannot easily tackle uh, in the EMCC approach. Uh, so here uh, we generalize this procedure and we extrapolate this uh, Hamiltonian not only uh, for the states that we cannot tackle, but also for the, the infinite number of uh, radical centers. Uh, and uh, uh, from that, uh, we can build the effective Hamiltonian and uh, 
uh, and validate uh, its form. So, and here how it looks like. So, if we uh, take uh, the fragments of the uh, of the chains that we use for our calculation, uh, we see uh, that indeed uh, it, it looks like a Heisenberg uh, Hamiltonian. So, uh, here the numbers in blue. Uh, are the nearest neighbor couplings. Uh, the numbers in red are the distant couplings. So we see here several things. First of all, we see that uh, that uh, all the interactions are mainly local. So, um, uh, so, so we see that uh, the uh, couplings between distant centers are very small. They're less than y one wave number, which is very comparable to the thresholds that we use in our calculations. Then we also see that uh, the numbers uh, don't change much. So we see that uh, the effective, uh, uh, effective uh, exchange coupling between nearest neighbors uh, converge very rapidly. Uh, so uh, we can use that uh, to to build our model. Uh, so so from that we can derive uh, a model for this compound that looks exactly like uh, the uh, Heisen the isotropic Heisenberg model for the infinite spin chain chains. And this is very nice because uh, uh, infinite Heisenberg spin chain is uh, one of a uh, very few uh, quantum integrable models. That means that it has an exact solution given by better answers. Uh, many properties are well known. So although, although there are some mathematical questions about this model, many physical properties uh, of this model are well known, including magnetic susceptibility. So we can compute magnetic susceptibility based on uh, the infinite uh, spin chain Heisenberg model. Uh, so if we just take the uh, exchange uh, coupling from the uh, EOM spin flip CCSD effective Hamiltonian, uh, then we see a qualitative agreement with the experiment. Uh, we see an overestimation in the uh, strength of magnetic susceptibility and um, Mm, some underestimation of the position of the maximum of uh, magnetic susceptibility. But we can improve the description. We can include perturbative triples, and we see that they uh, have a big impact. Uh, so, uh, so with perturbative triples, we see that the agreement becomes uh, much better. Uh, then we can include spin orbit effects. Uh, spin orbit interaction not only splits the levels but also shifts them. This is exactly what happens here. Uh, and we also can include uh, basis set effects. We can improve the basis set. But we see that uh, here the basis set uh, does not change uh, the value of the coupling much. And uh, once we sum them up, uh, we uh, observe an almost perfect agreement with the experimental uh, results. And we see that. Uh, uh, we almost approach the uh, experimental error bars in magnetic susceptibility measurements. And from that, um, uh, I would like to acknowledge people who really influenced me in my PhD work. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Anna Krajl, my PhD advisor, who guided me through science uh, and um, uh, who changed the way how I think uh, about science overall. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Evgeny Pifanovsky who guided me through the QCAM code uh, and who explained uh, how to use it and how to develop it. And uh, I also thank, uh, I also would like to thank Bozan for emotional support. And from that, I would like to answer any questions Thank you very much, Paul, for this very educational talk.
And there are also two areas that they set, uh, are set up uh, in the QCAM forum for questions after this um, uh, webinar is over. So you can still ask questions from the speakers and they will respond on that forum to your questions. So there is a question, Powell. Uh, what is the reason that weak correlations are so important in these systems? So yes, indeed, we see that uh, weak correlation is important, and uh, and um, it's not only in the copper oxalate that uh, I showed you, but also in a few other copper systems. And uh, this has been observed not only by us, but also uh, by um, uh, other studies. For example, there is a study uh, from Frank Nise about uh, copper acetate, uh, who also found that uh, uh, weak correlation is extremely important. But I think uh, more work is needed to, uh, to answer this question, uh, because it is not very clear uh, why this would be the reason. Okay, great. So it actually stimulate more research. So and one question is that for uh, iron two a complex, when you add one electron to iron three, you always have four unpaired spins. Can you really ignore all configuration with more paired electrons? Um, okay. Uh, Mm, um, probably, probably the question is about um, uh, uh, the configurations uh, which are not quintets, uh, but uh, the configurations with lower uh, multiplicities. Um, uh, and uh, for that, we run uh, preliminary calculations uh, to estimate uh, where they are, uh, and we see that they're higher than that. So the main contribution uh, to the uh, spin orbit splitting uh, comes uh, from the fact that the ground state, the ground quintet state, is degenerate, and uh, it has different occupancies of orbitals that uh, uh, lead to the major effect in the uh, in the spin orbit splittings, and the high level states. Um, uh, so, so, and, and the states high in energy contribute way less. So, but uh, from a very quick estimate uh, of uh, electronic structure, we saw that uh, those states with lower multiplicities are higher. And they are no, unfortunately, no time to read all the questions. I would like to read one question. In terms of magnetic coupling, it's broken symmetry approach ap uh, applied in this uh, study of copper oxalate. Is the case of orbital interaction of orbital coppers are not completely localized? Can you give some comments? Uh, so I'm not familiar uh, about uh, uh, broken uh, spin studies uh, on the copper oxalate. I'm afraid I can't uh, comment much okay. on that. Um, copper complexes tend to present a spin contamination. Is this problem solved with a spin orbit coupling included? Mm. Uh, it depends on the complex. Uh, some uh, complexes indeed uh, exhibit uh, spin contamination if we find uh, uh, the triplet state, uh, and this is for the copper complexes. But uh, uh, other complexes are fine and they don't exhibit a strong spin contamination. So I would say it is very system dependent. But uh, in uh, these particular calculations that I showed, spin contamination is not a problem for uh, for the uh, iron complex a square was very small, and for the copper co complex that I showed, I used uh, uh, DAP from the closed shell reference. So it doesn't have any spin contamination. Okay, great. Thank you very much from both speakers. Let's virtually join me to thank them. It was a nice session. I enjoyed it very much. So. I would like to close this session and thank you very much from everybody to taking the time and this and being in this session with us. This concludes our webinar. Thank you for your participation and see you at the next webinar.